Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about parallel computing. First of all, what is parallel computing? It is a type of computation in which many calculations or processes are carried out simultaneously. Large problems can often be divided into smaller ones, which can then be solved at the same time. Why do we need parallel computers? With the progress of computer science, the computational speed of the processors has also increased many a time. However, there are certain constraints as we go upward and face large complex problems. So we have to look for alternatives. The answer lies in parallel computing. There are two primary reasons for using parallel computing, save time and solve larger problems. Other reasons to adopt parallel computing are. Number one is cost savings. We can use multiple cheap computing resources instead of paying heavily for a supercomputer. Number two is overcoming memory constraints. Single computers have very finite memory resources. For large problems, using the memories of multiple computers may overcome this obstacle. So if we combine the memory resources of multiple computers then we can easily fulfill the memory requirements of the large size problems. Now, we gonna talk about different levels of parallel processing. There are different level of parallel processing. Number one is instruction level. It refers to the situation where different instructions of a program are executed by different processing elements. Most processors have several execution units and can execute several instructions, usually machine level, at the same time. Good compilers can reorder instructions to maximize instruction throughput. In earlier computer which is based upon reduced instruction set computer or RISC, pipelining was pretty common for parallel computation. After RISC, superscalar processors were developed which execute multiple instruction in one clock cycle. The superscalar processor design exploits the parallelism available at instruction level by enhancing the number of arithmetic and functional units in processing elements. Number two is procedure level. Here, parallelism is available in the form of parallel executable procedures. In this case, the design of the algorithm plays a major role. For example, each thread in Java can be spawned to run a function or method. Number three is program level. This is usually the responsibility of the operating system which runs processes concurrently. Different programs are obviously independent of each other. So parallelism can be extracted by operating the system at this level. Now let's talk about applications of parallel processing. Number one is scientific application slash image processing. Most of the parallel processing applications from science and other academic disciplines are mainly based upon numerical simulations where vast quantities of data must be processed in order to create or test a model. Examples of such applications include Global atmospheric circulation Blood flow circulation in the heart The evolution of galaxies Atomic particle movement Optimization of mechanical components Number 2 is engineering applications Dash Some of the engineering applications are 1. Simulations of artificial ecosystems 2. Airflow circulation over aircraft components Number three is mathematical simulation and modeling applications. The tasks involving mathematical simulation and modeling require a lot of parallel. Processing. Three basic formalisms in mathematical simulation and modeling are discrete time system simulation, differential equation system simulation, and discrete event system simulation. That's all for now. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, give it thumbs up. Share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.